This is part two of the Saturn in uh, Purva Ashada uh, um, uh, recording, and uh, I am Komela Sutton. I'm going to talk about Saturn, Purva Ashada, how uh, it affects the signs, what, be, what you need to be uh, conscious of. Actually, when I was making this recording, I thought I'll only make one section. But as I was doing it, I realized I had more uh, stuff to um, uh, put in there. So I decided to do uh, two recordings instead of one. So uh, in this particular section, I'm going to talk specifically about um, what signs that, uh, how your sign will get affected uh, by this transit and um, uh, and what are uh, the planets as well. So first thing is this, that the, I talked about two conjunctions in the other um, uh, uh, recording and uh, there, there was the uh, Mars Rahu opposite Saturn Ketu and I talked about the Saturn Ketu conjunction itself. Now there is another conjunction on 1st of January that is a Sun Saturn conjunction. This happens every year. Uh, every year there is it is disruptive, but this year it's on 1st of January. Although as Vedic astrologers we don't give great importance to 1st of January, but the whole world considers it as uh, the start of the year. So we should think that planets on that year have some say in the year. So Sun Saturn. Uh, Sun, uh, Saturn are always a tough conjunction. Uh, Saturn is hidden behind the sun. So one of the things is there are some secret things happening that we are not aware of. And uh, there will be power struggles. You'll see some important uh, personalities losing their power. Uh, there will be a big uh, unexpected, uh, you know, hidden uh, things that we are not so aware of. But if you're Leo or Capricorn Aquarius, then uh, you feel burnt out around uh, 1st uh, uh, of January, one week before, one week after. So it's a good time to think about your health, think about your energy levels. Uh, you may feel that your agenda is not being listened to. So uh, give yourself some time about it. Now, uh, uh, then uh, looking at the uh, next year, uh, 2019, and uh, Saturn in Purva uh, Ashada Nakshatra. Now, uh, in Purva Ashada, I already spoke about if you have Moon, Sun, and uh, Lagna ascendant in Purva Ashada, then this is a challenging year for you. You have to be very, very cautious with all your choices you make, and if possible, to delay the situation, don't rush into anything don't cut any corners because that is extremely uh, a challenging time. For the rest of us also, uh, 2019 is not an easy year because you may not directly be affected because each chart has its own personality, its own timing and dasha system that we are not looking at. But it can still uh, have effect on you, friends, family. So we are just being careful, cautious. We've had number of different uh, conjunctions taking place and we've all dealt with them and moved on. So 2016 was a long Jupiter-Rahu conjunction. 2018 was a long Ketu-Mars conjunction. Uh, the thing is this about the Saturn-Ketu conjunction is that it's long, but then there's no separation between the two. They continue like two peas in a pod. They continue moving First, a little bit forward, but then backward, backward, backward with uh, both Saturn and Ketu retrograde. So it is uh, something that we as astrologers haven't really watched it before. So uh, if you're Capricorn Ascendant and uh, your Lagna Lord is with Ketu, so uh, Ketu is telling you give up everything. Saturn is always saying uh, deal with situations, but this conjunction is also having happening in your 12th house. That means you're making effort, but you're not getting any result. So take time. Uh, don't rush. Uh, uh, you know, you'll always get the result. It may be just delayed. It just may come later. So don't uh, be frustrated by it. Just think, oh, yeah, this is a tough time for me. Let me uh, adjust my expectations accordingly. And uh, then Aquarius, uh, the... 
uh, Saturn Ketu again, Lagna Lord is uh, the um, the aspect is taking place in the eleventh house of profit. Money Ketu is not interested in money. It can give a lot, but it can also take away. Uh, but Shani uh, transit eleventh from Lagna or Moon is always regarded as good. But they're two together, so there's a a factor that we don't know exactly what is happening. This is so just too important. Even me as an astrologer, uh, I don't have any memory of these long conjunctions like this. So we all have to learn through the transit and learn through the experience. So we have to watch how this unfolds in the year. Uh, but it is in the 11th house, but you may feel yourself uh, frustrated, wanting to change everything. Uh, I always advise, you know, trim your tree of life. Don't uproot it, break it up, because that is not going to help you. Trim the things that are no longer important for you. So this is for Aquarius. Of course, if you are Sagittarius, then you're hosting these two planets, two malefic planets. They're very demanding on you. There's very high expectation, yet there can be delays, responsibilities, things not come, going your way. So, uh, Take your time, deal with it. And as I said, specifically Purva, Shada, then you have to work with that uh, if you have planets in that area, because those are the Purva, Shada is the area where Shani is having his, Shani and Ketu are having their maximum impact uh, for you. Uh, then the other signs, Aries, um, Saturn is in the ninth house of uh, Guru learning, higher mind, uh, father. Uh, so Saturn, you know, he's very interesting planet. He will always say, uh, I will, uh, I learn from my own experience. So you may not always listen, be open to advice. So it is good to learn from your own experience. And that Saturn um, opposition to Mars around 14th of um, June can be quite frustrating for you. And then you have Ketu as also as a accompanying planet there in your ninth house. Uh, Taurus are facing Ashtama Shani, eighth house transit. India is Taurus Lagna, the modern India. Uh, so we say the not the old India, but uh, the one that was formed 1947. So for that chart, you see, this uh, Saturn in the eighth house, so there are going to be some changes, transformation, uh, unexpected energy. So uh, we need to be, uh, as a country, India needs to be cautious. Taurus as a Lagna may expect unexpected events uh, that take place and to be uh, conscious of that. Uh, Gemini, of course, uh, Saturn is in the house of marriage and relationships and uh, one other thing with the nakshatras is if you know your uh, Nadi nakshatra position, then uh, you can see where uh, what Saturn is uh, transiting there. I may do a, a video on that later on, but it's too complicated to go into just now. But if you know, then you can see where Purva Shada is for you. But otherwise, it's the seventh house for a Gemini relationship area that you uh, have. Uh, are learning something or there are some difficulties there. Again, I would advise caution to take care and to be conscious of that. Uh, then uh, we go into um, cancer. For cancer, it is sixth house, hard work, a lot of hard work. <coughs> Excuse me. And Ketu may say don't work hard, but actually hard work is good for you. So Ketu is, uh, can say, okay, why are you working so hard? You should do things, take it easy, go for moksha. But Shani is the one that is giving you the uh, advice. And Shani is uh, one, until you sort out what Saturn demands, you can't move to the next dimension. So working hard is good for you. Then uh, Leo Lagna, sorry, last time I forgot Leo. So Leo, this is especially for you. Leo is children, fifth house children, creativity. Uh, Shani is uh, going to uh, want to do serious stuff. 
you know, take responsibility to serious stuff. You may find that children are being extra responsible, ex extra uh, issues that you have to deal with regarding children. And don't neglect that side. I feel that is very important there. Then Virgo, Saturn, Ketu are in the fourth house. Shani is uh, uh, there transiting your fourth house. It's about home, happiness. Uh, it's also about uh, uh, trans, uh, transport. Uh, and those areas can be affected. You may be thinking of changing home. You may think feel dissatisfied, unsettled. I would advise if you can avoid, don't change home in 2019 because all the heavy planets are there. You don't really want to be uh, focusing <clears throat> on uh, changing. Of course, if you have to do it, then you have to do it. Then find a good auspicious time to make the changes. Uh, Libra, Saturn is in uh, third house. Third house is house of self-effort. Saturn will always do it slowly, surely, and take your time. It's a good transit in the third house. Generally, that is a a positive aspect for you. Scorpio, Saturn is in the second house of savings, money, uh, dhana bhava, wealth house. So uh, it requires to be uh, cautious about uh, money, savings, uh, restructure your savings, you know, don't waste the energy there. Uh, be careful how you speak because Saturn can sometimes be harsh and Second house is a uh, house of speech as well for Scorpio. Uh, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, I already spoke about. And finally, Pisces is in the house of career. So career issues are <coughs> important for you. And um, <clears throat> there'll be some restructuring of career. You may think of, of doing something more spiritual. Uh, you can work towards something more spiritual as well. So then as far as the planets are concerned, uh, you know, sun, moon uh, and ascendant I already spoke about. So Mars, if Saturn is going, if you have Mars in Purva, Shada, Shani is going to go over it. Uh, that can be quite frustrating. But what happens with uh, Saturn transits over uh, planets that are um, other than uh, sun, moon and ascendant? They're short transits. It's exactly around the time it goes. So about 15 days, 10 days before, 10 days after. So uh, Mars, uh, uh, Mars uh, again, because it's a planet of action, Saturn will restrict you. So just be conscious if you know the degree that where it is going to be going over. And then Mercury is uh, emotion, uh, mental pressure. Um, you know, you may feel very pressurized mentally, uh, not thinking clearly, uh, feel a lot of burden on you. Uh, so be, uh, again, uh, that's not the time to make decisions when Saturn is exactly making a transit over your Mercury. Uh, <clears throat> Jupiter is connected to children as well as wisdom and gurus. Uh, so these areas, there may be some delays. Children uh, already could give some responsibility um, extra responsibility, some challenges that they are facing that you can support them. Uh, as far as uh, Venus is concerned, Venus is Karaka for marriage. So your marriage may hit a rocky patch. How are you going to deal with it? What are you going to do? Uh, be patient. Don't be hot-headed or want to do things quickly. Uh, that That is a key factor. And then Saturn return, if you're getting Saturn back to its natural position, it means you are either 29 or 58 or in your uh, late 80s. So each time it's a maturing time, uh, so especially uh, if you are getting your second Saturn return, which is in your 58, 59, you should pay extra attention to your health because that is uh, what is important. Uh, 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 at that stage. Uh, and then in um, Rahu and Ketu, uh, Saturn transiting over Rahu. Um, of course, you know, Saturn is with Ketu 
So that means that there's this sort of strange karmic situation that there's some issues that you think, I, I didn't do this. Why did this come to me? Uh, that some things need to be dealt with. Uh, Rahu Ketu sometimes don't get triggered off. So uh, you have to be, uh, uh, you know, take your time uh, making decision not to give in to anxiety or fear at that stage. So, uh, and Ketu, of course, Ketu means that uh, you are getting a Ketu return uh, and a Shani on top of your Ketu. Uh, Ketu is always expensive. I found that when Saturn goes over Ketu, we have some expenses to deal with. So, uh, uh, you know, don't spend your last penny. <laughs> Be careful about that. Uh, so um, that is the thing. So that is it for now. I may, through the year, make uh, special videos because, you know, there's too much to uh, pack in into uh, these two videos. But what I really want to reiterate again for you is that when we watch uh, uh, the planets and we study them, uh, we see good as well as challenging. And when challenging things come, then be conscious of it. Uh, be aware that this, this is a time that you need to um, take it uh, slowly and surely, not make major decisions at that time. I, I find that is the key thing. So this is a tough transit, uh, Saturn and Purva Ashada. But actually, the first part of it is quite uh, okay because it is just... Uh, doing what Shani does on its own in going through uh, uh, Nakshatra. And um, so, of course, if you have planets placed there, it will be tough. But it is really after uh, March when Ketu joins it. And then we have these two, uh, you know, great planets in um, uh, Purva Ashada, and then we have to watch out. So uh, what we can do is to plan for it, you know, uh, to know that these are uh, challenging times. So our reaction should be cautious, careful, take your time dealing with the situation. So I will be making uh, over this uh, next year uh, shorter videos that will talk about uh, uh, Saturn in uh, Saturn conjunctions with Mercury and Venus and other aspects. So you will be kept up to date, but this is like a, a big story so that you know uh, everything that is uh, about uh, the long uh, transit of Saturn um, in Purva Ashada and to plan accordingly. So all the best. Uh, I'm uh, going to see you soon. Uh, my website, uh, comella.com, please do uh, go and look at it and uh, subscribe, like, leave comments. I try to reply to some of the comments. So please do do that. Thank you very much.